You're about to learn about reasons you are not managing to carve clean, holding you back from having the best time on skis. For example, your aim could be off, you're doing unnecessary movements, and you'll also learn how an incompetent inside foot is like wiping your butt. Enjoy! So the first reason why you might not be carving is that you're aiming for too sharp of a turn for what your technique can handle, making you skid. So what the intermediate skier often does is that they aim and look pretty close to the tips of the skis for the end of the turn. And it's just far too sharp for your current ability if you want to be able to carve. So you have to look much further down the slope and imagine a much larger turn shape that will allow the skis to have the chance to carve, unless you're doing any of the other four mistakes in this video. If that's your mental image of what the turn should look like, it's incompatible with what the ski can do at this current point in time. So as an intermediate skier, if you can only achieve small edge angles, you can only do giant carve turns. So we gotta get used to this feeling of making a larger turn where the side cut of the ski and the edge angle determines your turn, not your mental image. I don't want to say that you can't have a picture in your mind where you want your turn to go. It's just that early on, it's going to overpower your ski's ability to carve if you put it too tight. As you get better and can achieve higher edge angles, you'll be able to think, I want to turn there, and you can do it by just having a higher edge angle to sharpen that turn. Improving your ski technique is an investment that will make every turn for the rest of your days feel way better. So why not join one of our Stompy Camps Rattles where you combine a lot of four instructors, video analysis and Carl Digital Ski Coach to push you to the next level. Hey mate, good to see you Radko. Good to see you. I haven't too. seen you for a while. Happy New Year. Dude, we are making a video about why people aren't carving. What do you think is the main reason like intermediate skiers who want to carve are not achieving a carve and they're skidding instead? Uh, not enough edging. Uh-huh. Angulation. So. And uh, yeah, not closing the turns enough. Uh-huh. To go very shallow. But the most is rules start from the bottom. Ankles, knees, mm -hmm. hips, and nicely angulating. Getting enough edge angles. Uh, exactly. Sweet. Without edging, there is no carving. The one and only drill you need to get used to letting the skis do their job is the J-turn. <laughs> to do the J-turn, look up, it's safe, push off a little bit, roll the knees in a wee bit to let the skis do the job. Don't interfere with it, just let it happen and you'll leave nice clean tracks in the snow behind. It will teach you to be a passenger, like on a train, you know, you'll just follow the rails to where the skis wants to take you. It's pretty straightforward, just roll the feet and the knees a little bit uphill and let the skis take you across the slope, drawing a smile. If you can leave two clean tracks in the snow, it's time to link some turns together. To link them together, find an extremely flat slope. This one is too steep, to be honest, but let's do it anyway. So here in the transition is where you gotta be super patient to allow the skis to do it. Because if you do like you used to, you're gonna overpower the skis again. In the transition, let the skis do their job. Be super patient. Because in the transition is where most people mess it up and start skidding because they wanna rush it. Manage your expectations. It can take quite a long time to carve and you will need to maybe do many J turns, both directions, and then try to link it for many, many turns before you really can pull it off. There's some excellent feedback you'll get when practicing carving, and that is feel for the silence and low vibrations. A carving is really smooth and silent, while skidding is like rough and bouncing and loud. Oh, carving again, quiet. So smooth. Ah, that's joyful.
Next reason you're not carving is maybe because you're skiing too steep terrain. In order to carve a steep slope, you need to have high edge angle, high outside ski pressure, and be able to close the turn somewhat in order to control the speed. The drill to learn to carve steeper terrain is to make C-shaped turns. Down this black rut, you can maybe tell how I'm holding on to the edges for a little bit longer, creating these nice C-shaped turns. That is helping me to control my speed. Doing C-shaped turns is going to challenge our edge angle, outside ski pressure, and holding on to the turn for a bit longer. It was bumpy. It's really not that good for this. The key with this drill is that you gradually find steeper and steeper terrain so it will push you a little bit to hold on to that edge and get nice outside ski pressure. As for feedback here, use all your senses, your eyes, ears, skin, feet, to feel vibration, wind, and see what's going on to see if you're really maintaining a steady speed. I need to make a phone call. Yo. Good day, David. I got a question. I want a second opinion. What is the main reason you think intermediate skiers fail to carve when they want to carve? I think basically because everything up to the development or their development up to the point of farming, they basically uh, use too much active rotation when steering the skis. Uh -huh. Active rotation will kill a car and then it creates skidding. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to start developing a lateral movement at the lower joints, which allows your tensor of mass to move inside the arc of your beat. And then from there, um, yeah, you will then need to stay laterally balanced against the outside. So basically get away to the inside of the turn and get used to this new thing. Well, thank you so much and uh, enjoy teaching over there. Thank you so much, mate. Next reason you might not be carving could be due to low edge angles, making you skid instead of carve. When you're flat ski, first of all, it just slides and rotates really easily. And the more we get them on edge, the harder it will get to rotate the ski. Unless you achieve high edge angles like this, the ski will just easily skid. But with a high one, it's gonna carve real good. The drill is to rid the training wheels, just like a kid on a bike at training wheels for support, limiting their turns. Why aren't you ready? It's no fun with training wheels. We gotta rid the inside leg, helping us to turn more too. So, by really softening this leg, helping us fall over, we gotta achieve much higher edge angles. We can even go beyond softening it to even like actively pull it up a little bit while keeping the ski on the snow. In the beginning, just soften that inside leg, making it tip on the inside. Now, as you get more comfortable, you can start to actively like, pull it up, but keep the edge still in the snow. By softening the inside leg, it's gonna make me just tip into the turn because I get rid of that training wheel. I'm gonna stop touching the snow now, but oh, boy, yeah, getting a bit too bumpy to be honest. As for some feedback to search for, it's a sensation that you're really falling over to the inside. But thanks to like softening that inside leg, usually it makes people actually put more pressure on the outside ski as a mechanism to stay in balance. We skiers are also so well drilled on thinking about the outside foot that we forget about the inside ski and what it's doing. Learning to use the inside ski is a bit like learning to wipe your own butt with the left hand, which really isn't that hard when you think about it. The outside ski really is boss. It shows what direction it's pointing at and how much edge angle it has. And the inside ski just gotta follow its lead and point in the same direction and be in the equal amount of edge angle. To teach that inside foot a lesson, try some stationary carving. Find a perfectly flat and beautiful location like here. Stand still and then roll the feet in unison. You can look down to see what's going on. Do they have the exact same edge angle? Two tips to do this a little extra well. First one is think of the kneecaps. 
If they're pointing in the same direction, you have the feet on the same edge angle. The second tip is to have the tripod shaped foot in mind, that you kind of have to edge it over and backwards a little bit on the inside foot to really get that foot onto the blade. And I really practice this. Pay attention to, are you achieving the exact same edge angle? Are the knees pointing in the right direction? And do you dare to roll that inside ski over the blade of the foot? Next drill is the railroad drills while skiing. Try to bring that feeling with you from the stationary. Look at that, I found a flat enough section. So just roll them feet super gently and very accurately and you'll quickly progress. We just use the skills we were just practicing by rolling the skis together with a bit of an extra emphasis on that inside leg. Hey guys, it's Ted. As for feedback, you can actually get trained by the Olympian Ted Ligeti in the Carve app. On a beginner slope, one of the great things to work on is edge similarity. So trying to have your shins parallel, being really clean on the edge. So both skis are just laying perfect railroad track arcs on, especially when it's a, a place where you don't really have to worry about speed control. Due to the low edge angles of the intermediate skier, any unnecessary movement like starting to turn from the upper body, pole planting, twisting the hip too much, it's gonna make you skid instead of carve. So we gotta fix that. You shall not twist, the ski shall twist you. So we must do no twisting at all. Think about it, none of that, and none of that, none of that, and none of that. No movements like that. A little drill to fix all of that is the posture reset. All right, in transition, one little hop, feel the position, carve. There we go, car. Oh, that wasn't quite the reset I meant to do. Reset. So, reset your posture, do a turn. And then in transition, a little bounce, reset it. Just like, remind yourself. There it is, and then turn. Sweet. So you make no unnecessary movements. Just those lateral movements, side to side, to keep carving. The one way to do feedback on unnecessary movements is video analysis. Have a friend film you two thirds down the run so you can ski past them, watch the video and look for any unnecessary movements that is implying rotation and then try to stabilize it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you will learn to carve. I think it's my favorite sensation almost in the entire world to have a clean carve on a steep run into another one. It's just great. Check out that video or maybe join one of the ski camps for adults. See you in the next one. Ciao.